Well, it's time now for Ask Your Meteorologist. So we're going to scoot over and we're going to bring in Jacob and Dickie Welcome. here. Welcome. Yes. So thanks for having us in your, your area. Yeah, I brought them in here because I like to point things out. Yeah. <laughs> the not touch screen, touch screen. No. Uh -huh. No. It's not. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, and look who's <laughs> trying to make an appearance. Spoiling okay. the fun. Okay. So. Well, Wednesday snowfall, it was something else. There was just enough, maybe for a snowball fight, a snowman building contest. Yep. And no? uh, the snow is a little bit more on the wetter, you know, yeah. denser side, I suppose you'd say, compared to that, um, what we had in December. It was more fluffy, powdery, and blowing around. So I know that. I asked on Wednesday, you know, hey, what questions do you have about winter storms and winter weather and things like that? And I got a lot of good questions yeah. for today, today. Okay, well, let's start. All right, first up here, what conditions are required for those big fluffy flakes of snow that fall sometimes? This is from, I think, Rochelle. Yeah, yeah, so we had that, uh, we had some of those big snowflakes, in fact, with this system coming on through, it was really pour, you know, pouring down snow for a period of time. Never mind about the warm ground and all that. I wanna show you how we look and try and decide, not only, okay, do we expect snow, but how will those snowflakes be? Because that's something we often, hey, is it fluffy and powdery? Is it gonna blow around? Is it heavy and wet? Is it gonna be hard to shovel, things of like that? Uh, do you remember in you know, high school and middle school when you had the graph paper? Yeah. You would draw your line graphs and things of like that. Well, we do the same thing, but ours is called a skew T. So basically, you know, you have your, your X axis, the, the, the ground, the Y axis, instead of being vertical, making those boxes that you can fill in, we actually skew those lines here. So for reference, you know, at one mile, one mile up, zero degrees is right here, but at the surface, zero degrees is there. So that zero degree Fahrenheit line is there, 32 is right there. So everything's pushed over as a way for us to better look at the atmosphere when we're plotting different things like temperature and dew point moving on up. So what would it take for snow? We're gonna use lines of temperature and dew points. Those are most commonly looked at. There's other things we look at in the atmosphere, the wind direction, wind speed, things of that. Uh, we have this zone here. It's between 10 degrees below zero and 20 degrees below zero. It's called the dendritic growth zone or the snow growth zone. Where our snow actually is created, that's way high up there. Heather, we don't make snow at the surface. It falls from the sky, right? Accurate. Yes. <laughs> and so our temperature profile, we need the temperature to be below what to have snow? 32. 32. There's my 32 okay. degree line there. And this profile here, we've got a saturated air. See how the green and the red lines are together? Yes. Our dew point and our temperature are equal, and that's saturation. And we're saturated all the way up into that snow growth zone right here. And uh, because we're also closer to that 32 degree line, the higher we go and the closer to 32, that snow will be wetter in nature. So that's going to be bigger, fluffier snowflakes more than likely, given some other factors. Okay. Some things to look at. Notice how this particular example, my temperature goes yes. above 32 degrees. We will still make snow because there's moisture and the temperature here together saturation, but it's gonna melt. So that's when we thought talk either sleet or freezing rain or just a cold rain. Mm -hmm. And then in addition, I can be saturated at the surface below 32. If I don't have that moisture in that proper level though, I'm not gonna make snow. That's probably freezing drizzle. Wow. Heather's gonna oh. off yeah. the road, right? Exactly. Hope, hope not. <laughs> Rochelle, I hope that answered your question there. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot. very thorough there. answer. We got yes. some, we got some yes. other questions. Oh, we do have some that hopefully have simpler answers than that. <laughs> Deborah wants to know, why did we get the winter storm watch so early, like Monday morning, and it wasn't until Wednesday? Yeah, so the winter weather alerts that come out, this is the big graphic here for you. Uh, the alert types goes winter storm watch, that's first, then winter weather advisory is an upgrade to that. Winter storm warning is a further upgrade to that. The issuance time here, and I'll post this on my face, you can see it full screen, there we go. Uh, usually 24 to 48 hours out is when they'll issue a watch for winter weather. Uh, and that's when it's favorable for those winter storm events that could be a threat to life or property. The upgrade to an advisory or a winter storm warning is usually that 12 to 24 hour range. We're going from a 50% chance of a watch to at least an 80% chance for an advisory or a warning. And uh, depending on those impacts, that's what they'll do for that. So that's kind of an interesting wow. way to look at it. Okay, wow. I didn't realize I was blocking that. Apologies. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, we, we're about out of time, but maybe we should get to um, Ginger's question. Can we skip that one? Because I think Ginger's might be a little uh, faster. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty mentioned banding. What exactly is that? Yes, so let me get to my, my banding question here. So Kevin mentioned on his Facebook page, hey, there might be a band of heavier snow. Think of it as a pocket of heavy rain that's along a, a corridor that it happens here. So this was actually, I pulled this graphic from a post he put on his Facebook page. He was pointing out these darker blues in here. So that's a band of heavier snow that's in there. You can almost see there's another band right there. Under those bands is where you have higher snowfall rates. You can get snow to fall more. And so instead of everyone getting equal amounts of snow, people that find themselves under that banding, um, that's often going to be 
where we see those higher oh. snowfall amounts play out. Okay. Your job is not easy. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm glad no, it's not it mine. Yeah. Did yeah. you have fun? Did you have fun driving? Oh, yeah, it was a good time. I've had some donuts, uh, you know, some breakfast oh, and stuff and whatnot. So <laughs> nice. uh, we had a good time with that. Uh, but, yeah, we'll be out, Storm Tracker. You know, we were out checking out the roads. We went all the way down to Effingham and yeah. down towards Cumberland County and that's came back to Champaign to Danville. So that's what we'll do when winter weather happens is be out in the field and covering here in the studio. Okay. Awesome. Well, Very thanks good. for hanging out with us. Oh, excuse me, letting us hang out with you, too. Yeah, we brought you in here <laughs> so we can point things out, right? All right, if you have a question for Jacob, you can post it on his Facebook page. You can email it to him or you can send him a tweet.